Hello, Marty here. First of all, I wanted to thank everyone that subscribed to my channel and took the time to watch the videos. Well, the video. It was just one. I got a lot of valuable feedback that I'm already using in this video. One of the first things I'm doing is creating a series of videos where people new to design or illustrator can learn the basics. I'm also going to make these videos shorter and focus on one topic at a time. That way, it will be easier to follow me once we get to more advanced videos. So, like I said before, keep sending me your feedback and ideas, and also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share this video. In this video, we're going to go through some basic Illustrator settings, and I'm going to share how I set up mine. I always start with an 800 by 600 artboard. I like to keep my units as pixels. And my color mode is RGB. This is just a personal preference. Feel free to change it to anything you want, but also keep in mind that if you need to change something, you can do that later. So let's create the document now. The reason I create my document 800 by 600 is that most of the things I do end up on my Dribbble account, and as you probably guessed already, 800 by 600 is the maximum width and height for their shots. Now that we have a new document, let's move to the next step. Let's go to Illustrator, Preferences, General. I like to set my keyboard increment to one pixel. The reason I do this is that I use my keyword a lot to move things around. So by keeping it as one pixel, it's easier for me to have control of where I'm moving things. Then let's go to units. I prefer to keep them like this, but feel free to change it. Just make sure that if you change your units, you probably want to update your keyboard increment too. Now let me show you what we just did. Let's create a new object. As you can see here, we have the X and Y position of the object. If I press any of the arrows on my keyboard, you will notice that the element is moving one pixel at a time. As a little bonus, if you hold shift while pressing any of the arrows, the object will be moving 10 pixels. The other setting I like to change is Align to Pixel Grid. What this feature does is that it automatically moves your points to the closest pixel on your grid. So to avoid this, let's turn it off. This feature used to be under Transform, but they replaced it with a Scale Corners and Scale Strokes and Effects. On Illustrator CC 2017, you can find it here. As you can see right now, it's on. To turn it off, just click once and if you're on previous versions of Illustrator, just make sure that the box Align to Pixel Grid is unchecked. If you need to change the color mode of your document, you can just go to File, Document Color Mode. And if you need to change the size of your artboard, just go to Document Setup, click on Edit Artboards. As you can see, we have the width and height here. If you want to change the size of your document, just change these numbers here. Just keep in mind that when changing these numbers, you have to pay attention where your reference point is located. Just to give you an example, if you put your reference point on the top left corner and you change the size, this is what happens. If you're done changing the size of your document, you can just go to your selection tool and click. So next step, I want to show you the panels I use and how to set up your own workspace. I came up with this list based on the most common tools and the ones I use the most. But feel free to explore what panels work best for you. There's really no right or wrong answer here. Explore the panels, see what tools are available, 
and make your decision based on that. I like using my panels as icons, that way they don't cover too much space on my artboard, but you also have the option of expanding your panels. If you're having problems finding a panel that you need, you always have the option of going to the Windows tab and look for all the panels there. All the panels related to fonts are under Type. Once you have all the panels that you want, next thing we're going to do is save everything as a workspace. That way you don't have to repeat the same process every single time. To access workspace, you go to this drop down menu here. As you can see, Adobe has some preset workspaces, but we want to create a custom one. As you can see, I already have one, but if you go on new workspace, type the name that you want, it's going to show that there's already one with my name. If I click OK, it will override it. And that's it. Now you have your own workspace with all the panels that you want. Well, that's all I got for episode two. Once again, Feel free to send me your ideas and feedback and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share this video. Thanks for watching.